Welcome to another session with Dave and myself. Today we're going to show you how to protect yourself from this bullshit. Call it bullshit because that's what it is. Bullshit. And you guys buying these damn cell phones. This is your fault that this bullshit exists because they have to put this up with the excuse that they got to do something because you got to supply you the surface so you don't have to drop zones. This Gwen Tower is dangerous shit, causes DNA damage, causes cellular damage, causes brain damage, and then you put the phone to your head and you move and all this, you, move, you, know, you go crazy. So now, <laughs> let me show you a little something how to create yourself a two things. We're going to show you how to make a repulsor. And we've already tried it with some people, we've already given it out. What you're going to need is some masking tape. Masking tape. Buy at any Home Depot, get it cheap stuff, it doesn't have to be expensive. Dollar store, wherever you can get it, okay, whatever you can afford. Remember, this is all based on your your economic your economics. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna get magnets. Now I got these at Michael's. You get about 52 of them. I think 52 or 55 of them for um, uh, 15 bucks. And what you're gonna do? Make this a little easier. Is there a preferred type of magnet? Like, is uh, it the stronger the better, or not so much the stronger the better? Stronger the better for sure. Because these are the easiest to work with. Because uh, you get the neodyme, and you're fighting. I mean, it's a fight. Every one you put in is a fight. It's yeah. Because I was gonna say, like, Princess Auto has. Uh, yeah, no, I got the neodymium. Someone, someone, someone told me about that on my show. Yeah. I was like, really? In Canada? Yeah. <laughs> and listen, the guy listened to. And me. they're reasonably priced. It's yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. They, I, I, I go every time I go there. It's like ten dollars a pack. <clears> you get, I think, three in a pack. So. Okay, so what I'm doing, primarily is I'm just separating them, so when I start working on this stuff, it'll be, it goes a little easier. We need about 20 of them. I thought you were setting up for checkers. That too. That's a good strong one. Let's see what we got here. What do you got? 4, 8, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's, these are your neodyme. These are stronger, strong as blazes. Now, if you want to do it with the neodyme, you can. You probably only would need about half the amount. But it's a real, real, real pain in the backside to work with them. Because what you're doing here on that piece of tape is you're going to be putting uh, the same field or the same polarity. In other words, you're going to go either north-north or south-south all the way across. So what you do is you start off... Doesn't matter which end is which end is showing. Get that going, and make sure they're repelling. If they're attracting, then you gotta you gotta put them in repulsion. Oh, geez, then forget neodymium. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, holy, it's, they'll snap together like nothing. Okay, so okay, as you can see, these are all repelling. Every so often, then pull the tape up. Uh, Hold it that way. Pull it up so it goes around it. Looks like you need a third hand there, Tony. Um, maybe. <laughs> so too many hands ruin the, ruin the stew. Okay. Okay, there we go. I'm telling you, you got some strong ones and you got some weak ones. Um, Princess Auto has these type as well. Yeah, uh, you can get these. Um, I got them at Michaels. They're pretty cheap. For what you got, like you got 15 a pack. So I'm gonna keep on. 50 that. or 15? 50. 50. 50. Yeah. Ah, 55 or something like that. There we go. See. Jeez. <laughs> yes, I'm saying it gets pretty strong. Yeah. Intense. The reason why you're putting the tape around it like that is so that it can help you hold them because they do want to shoot like a rocket. Sideways out. And when you put them on. Now, I've been working with a fellow in Yugoslavia and the Croatia part of Yugoslavia. I still call it Yugoslavia. I found out yesterday on a video that Hitler wanted to take Yugoslavia out before he marched into Russia. And then Bill Clinton bombed the hell out of Yugoslavia, thinking that maybe that was the reason why they did it. <laughs> Pre-op, 
pre, uh, preempt uh, effect go into Russia. Who knows? Bill Clinton? Bill, yeah, Bill Clinton. Remember when Monica Lewinsky... Oh, there we go. Yeah, but... Remember when Monica Lewinsky um, uh, polished his knob there for him? And he got all, people got all mad. Bill, you shouldn't have done that. He said, I didn't have sex with the woman. No, no, sorry, but your story sounded like um, the reason why Hitler didn't go in there was because... Well, he wanted to take out Yugoslavia so that Yugoslavia, they wouldn't have had an ally that was behind the German line. So if they take out, took out Yugoslavia, yeah. they could have just moved into Russia from that end. Okay, so gotcha. that's what I heard. I was listening to this historian, this guy that had been around uh, since the First World War, and he was talking about the events that had happened in the United States and what was really going on and how things got to where they are today. And the guys sounded pretty credible. Uh, because going into Yugoslavia, I never understood the reason why they went into Yugoslavia, unless maybe for Tesla technology or something to that effect. But they had plans to bypass. Um, so you got to, and again, make sure you push them down here because they will pop out. Okay, so I'm going to be quick about it. So you want to come up back here now. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I was looking at it and I was not paying attention okay, so through the lens. So how many were you getting gonna put, in there? You said 20. 20, yeah. 20. We're almost any, there. Any rationale for 20? Um, it's just the field that it puts out. And we were looking at it. And again, yeah, I was talking about my friend there in Yugoslavia. His name is DeMarco. Um, he, he was, we've been working together, collaborating on a triangle that we will eventually show as well. On the tube, see what I mean? They're already fighting. So we push them in, push them in, push them in, and then we take this and flip it over tightly to create a, oh, haha, caught you little bugger. Oh, you sucker, you jumped out. Oops. There. See if I ready to pop out again. <laughs> okay, so now we take another piece from here. That didn't go long enough. So now what we do is we put it there. And now we have a repulsor, which is also putting out a slight EMF field, or not EMF field, a magnetic field. It's not electromagnetic. And we can test it with an EMF device. It shows you the range. Be in the red, but it's not in the red. Why is it? Here, it's in the red. There. Okay. Oh, maybe we got some shielding. Okay, it's in the slight red. There we go. So it's putting out about a four foot, five foot range. So when you wear this thing, it's going to put a field around you, four or five feet, which will block or mitigate some of this that's hitting you. And. Uh, <laughs> There we go. Wow. The basement must be shielded. Because this was up above, we'd be at like, um, let's see, she's sort of in the red there. There we go. There we go. Huh. Oh. So we have a Star Trek. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I just didn't have my compass. Maybe I put that one magnet wrong. But anyway, usually when you put this on there, it gives you about a five to seven foot range at 20 magnets. And when you put it on, if you put three of them on, um, 
in. Okay, so should be okay. Yeah, there we go. There's the repulsion there. This side will be north, this side will be south, that side will be south, and this side will be south. Okay, so you're going to have one north, three south with this. Or one south, three north, depending on how you set up your magnet. <clears throat> anyway, it'll put a field around you, and if you put three of them on, two, one in the back or one in the front, it'll put a 12-foot range around you. So that, again, it has a protective effect. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to make a ground, portable ground. Okay, so we're going to this off. And what this does is while you're walking or while you're outside and you're, and you're, and you're building up a charge in the body, this has a means of discharging. I forgot the magnets. Okay, we'll use the smaller magnets. Okay, so basically, cut a piece of copper. This is what I do. I forgot the wire to crap. Okay, so. Again, I'm going to take magnets and we're going to make them repel. I got the wrong magnets. So this is going to have this is going to have a, a minimal effect. Uh, okay. So we're going to go one, two, three. Usually I use two big magnets, but since I don't have them. Four. So these are all repelling. So you're really going to have to be quick at what you're doing here. So, Sort of general idea here. Can you cut yourself on? Yeah. Is it sharp? No, I gotta go get the right ones. Then we're gonna have to pause this. I gotta go get the right, right magnets. Okay. Big. okay, basically, we had the wrong magnets, so I have to go get the ones that I normally use. And basically, the wire I'm gonna use to wrap it up basically a simple little 20 gauge copper wire, which really has no bearing on what's going on. So basically, again, we're going to get the bigger magnets again. Hardware stores will have these uh, in Canada. They're about um, three bucks, three forty-nine for a pack of six. In the United States are about half. <laughs> That's the way it is, <laughs> about a buck seventy or buck sixty-nine. All right, so you take two magnets, repel them. Aha! Take the. And both ends north, both ends south, doesn't yeah, matter. Doesn't matter. What matters is getting it in there. Getting it in. Okay, so fold it over so she's nice and tight. Put it in. Boom. Ah, like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> okay, so then basically just crimp the end, you know. Flatten it down a bit. Get the other side. Now you want to leave a little bit of a gap here for your alligator clip to connect to. So again, don't want to completely crimp it. May have to cut a bigger piece of copper, maybe. I don't know. When I find out, I think I got it okay though. Okay. There's your piece. There's your repeller part of it, and it's also part of your grounding. So what you're going to do, and again. Refine it so that you don't have any sharp points anywhere. Um, you can see all I'm doing is just you know, pushing it down here, pushing it down, keeping it so that once because this is you're gonna wear this on your skin. Okay, so that's the easy part.
Now here's the easier part. <laughs> Gonna measure off. And you don't want to obviously tape those magnets together inside to hold them together because the no, whole point of contact. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, you could do it that way. I, mean, it's, I don't do it that way. I mean, what I'll do sometimes too is because I've got this going, I'll take the copper, okay, and wrap it up in such a way just to reinforce it so it doesn't come undone. Basically, that's all I'm doing. That sort of reinforces the the band so they don't, you know, uh, let go. And as you see again, it, it puts out. It uh, what the heck tightens it up a little bit. It's like a nicely wrapped chocolate. Tony. Yeah. Give that to your girlfriend and see what she says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> is there, a, ro yeah, is there a rock inside? Kind of. Yeah, kind yeah. Of, yeah there's something hard in there. <laughs> <laughs> I got something hard for you. I got something hard for you. Yeah. Gift. Okay, there you go. It's the male testosterone. Get, don't, get, don't get all your knickers in the knot. Just, <laughs> that's how men talk. You know. Not the foo-foo type men either. Ones have been genetically engineered, the, the uh, transgenders that have been created through decades of genetic engineering with uh, adding genes to the, to the food supply, creating the anomalies that we have today, things that we should not be in nature. So I can do what I was doing there. Mm -hmm. okay, so I think you've done this before. done this before. And we're talking about genetics, we're talking about nano. Causing, we're talking about disruptions of the human biology, and nobody's born different. You were created. Keep that in mind. You weren't born the way you are, you were made the way you are. So, we say you got an extra hormone, or extra genetic, or an extra gene that was put there on purpose. Okay, so what we're doing now is we basically we splice the wire, add an alligator clip. To the wire, and then we're now going to crimp that wire. We're going to smash it, smash it, baby. Show me some, show me the power. So, there we go. So, it doesn't you know, make sure it's good and tight so it doesn't come out. Good contact, okay. There we go. Well, I can do what I was doing here. There, aha. Uh -huh. See, she's solid, not coming out. Now, we'll reinforce it with tape. So, we're going to get the other side. This is pretty, this is rocket scientist here. This is, you know, <laughs> fundamental stuff here that anybody <laughs> learned in well, my day. Anyway, uh, by the time you were in fourth grade, you knew about this kind of stuff. But today, I don't know what we're teaching them. Uh, millennials, millennials, that's an interesting terminology, millennials. I feel sorry for this generation. I really feel sorry for them. These is the only generation that has gone and take, taken political science Canada, we have five jobs in political science, 10,000 students in political, in political science. Somebody in the university did not tell, tell these people that their chances of getting that job are next to nothing. And then some of them are saying that they're waiting for the baby boomer generation to go away so they can now have those jobs. Let me illuminate you millennials. You millennials are the refined experiment. My generation was the prototype experiment. And let me explain to you what I'm talking about. Your generation was already written about back in, in late 1969 to 1974. If you want to know about your generation, if you're really interested to see what they're going to do with you in the great experiment, go get a book by Alvin Toffler called Future Shock. It was written way back in the day. If you want to know what's going to happen to your generation, read the book. If you don't understand that book, get a baby boomer to interpret it for you. 
Okay, because we will tell you what's going to happen to you. What happened to us is that throughout the course of time, they exploited us with experimentation. First, they drugged us. They vaccinated us with live culture and told us that the live culture was dead. Lie. Then they changed the food supply, altered our food with through uh, nano particle poisoning, through genetics, and then through different chemicals that they added to the food, and then they gave us polymer-based soaps, which made us what we are today, sick and broken down. Then in the 90s, they took away our jobs. Just like you feel like you were no job, you went and got all this training, we got retrained, we got re-educated, because our jobs were gone, and so they had to re-educate us and retrain us. This is the government now that did this, and I'm talking Canada. And what happened was those jobs that, were, that we got retrained for didn't exist. Does this sound familiar? The only difference is that we didn't have to pay for that. We paid for it through our taxation. But you, you have gone to school and you have taken the arts, the most useless thing you could have ever taken, some of you. And you have spent $50,000 in a four-year time frame you have absolutely no job, and now you're doing volunteer work, and a lot of you are going back to the jobs you had before while you're in school, you know, flipping burgers, working in restaurants, pushing brooms, working security, and the whole nine yards, waiting for an opportunity to use those skills that you got trained for. I have news for you. Those skills will never be used in the fields that you think you're going into. I will suggest to you very strongly, read the book, and then I will suggest for you very strongly, those of you who have, a, who have a brain in your head and can hear an old fossil like me tell you how they have manipulated you. Just think of me as another type of George Carlin, a, symb a symbiotic of him. And he's telling you that the whole system is screwed up and it's a lie. And the one thing you should never do is trust your government. Never believe them. Never follow the bullshit. Because what's going to happen to you is what they did to us earlier. And the jobs that you're waiting for are gone. Once the baby boomers are done, so are those jobs. And so what's going to wind up happening is a lot of you are going to be SOL. The bulk of you will get a job. The most you will work is three years. After three years, they're going to lay you off or find some excuse to get rid of you, to bring in some new recruit, some brand new recruit that will do the job for less money, <laughs> less benefits, and you will then be hunting for work for at least six to nine months. Ask me how I know. That's what's in store for you. Read the book. Seriously, read the book. That's the best advice anybody from my generation could have ever told you to do because that book was specifically written for your generation. This one right here, right now. So if you are a millennial, I would strongly suggest instead of watching the YouTube and following the bullshit sales pitch that are telling you about your perspectives and your objectives, Tell, I would suggest you very strongly, don't pay no mind to it. Start becoming self-employed, become self-autonomous, and then and build your career from that. Because the jobs you're looking for are going to be in Asia, and guess what? They don't want you. All right. Here we have built cable. We have put an insulation end on each end by putting the tape just slightly over it. So what you're going to do now is put this here. Okay. Oh. We're clipping it on. And you're going to clip it on to a t-shirt, oops, a bra, whatever you got, undergarments, t-shirt, garment, whatever you're wearing. Click it on. It's got to make contact. Boom. And then, just for, um, this will go inside your shirt. This is not on, on the outside. This will go on the inside your shirt. And then you will attach it to a piece of metal. What I did is I made magnets here. So you will attach it to a magnet or a piece of metal. You can cut off another piece of copper if you want. Just to give you an idea. Put this on a belt. Put it on your in your pocket. Attach it to your underwear. Whatever you want to do, whatever you feel comfortable. Just for argument's sake, we'll just do this here. How does one open up? Isn't that interesting? Get in there. And you attach it to that. You've just made a portable ground. So when you're outside, when you're walking about, when you're doing anything, okay, your body is now going to constantly be building up with frequencies and charges for frequencies from your cell phones, from Wi-Fi's, 
towers, whatever, from these things booming all the time, stuff coming out of your car, electric smog. And when you, this stuff will still hit you, but instead of hitting you and charging your cells and building up a charge, you will now release the charge from your body to the ground. This is a portable ground. Now, if you ask me to make this for you, I will charge you. <laughs> this is pretty simple to make. Okay, Everything we've shown you today is pretty simple to make. Just have the courage to try it. You know, Again, don't let nobody tell you you can't do something. And don't feel inadequate. Give it a try. You might surprise yourself. You might be surprised at the genius waiting to come out of you. You know, don't let anybody put you down and don't let anybody call you stupid. Stupid, a person that's stupid refuses to hear the truth, acknowledge the truth, or is willing to learn. That's who's stupid. Or is not willing to learn, you mean? Not willing to learn, sorry, not willing to learn. Okay, that's who's stupid. Stupid is somebody, again, who's not willing to learn, not willing to acknowledge the truth, not willing to listen to the truth. That is stupid, beyond belief stupid. So, uh, don't let anybody tell you you're stupid. Okay. If they tell you you're stupid, you know what you do then? You have a Chuck U. Farley attitude, and you say, I'll show you, and do it. And then do it. You remember the old saying, just do it, just do it. All right, do it. You know, there you go. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's pretty simple. I'm showing you two ways of blocking frequencies. This is a pulsar. I've had people already uh, with prototypes. I've given it to people. They have put this in their pillows, and they find at nighttime now they can sleep because it's putting a slight field around the pillow, around their head, where it allows them to sleep and block some of the transmissions that are coming through. If you don't have your room shielded, if you don't have aluminum all over the place or, you know, different things to discharge your room from frequencies that are coming in, this could help tremendously with some of you who are having problems sleeping. And this can help you while you're in your everyday life. You can, you know, if you're around computers and monitors all day long, this is another way of, again, discharging the buildup in the body. And again, it's cheap and expensive. You know, what's it going to cost you? The magnets are the most expensive thing. You can buy a sheet of copper like this at any Michaels. Well, I shouldn't say that. Michaels in Canada. I don't know about the United States. Uh, you run, I think you can buy three or four sheets of it for 15 bucks. I bought a roll from it from China, which cost me about 45 or 50 because I'm always making stuff. So again, this is something you guys can do. Do it, honestly. And we show you, you can, if I can do it, honestly, anybody can do it. Okay, this is not rocket scientist. This is just basically understanding certain principles, applying those principles, and then making it. All right, that's simple. So to, um, I asked before the segment, or did I, did we talk about it, about the, whether or not those, with a repulsor to uh, watch out for credit cards? Oh yeah, no, we didn't say that, but you gotta mention it, yeah. Oh. If you do put this by anything, make sure you keep it away from credit cards and stuff because it will put out a field. And debit will, cards. Debit cards, anything that has an electrical magnetic, magnetic strip. So in other words, if you get a magnetic strip on your wallet or whatever, you either put the wallet away or put the thing in front. Let's put one here, one here, and one in the middle. Yeah. To the next segment, to your house, see ya.